What's up, y'all? Hey, I just want to break it down real quick on how I went from prison to property. It's laid out in this book right here. It's my book. I produced it. I published it. Um, it's just all of the experience that I had of getting into real estate five months after I was released from prison. So I, I compiled it all together, all of the basic information that you need to know to get into real estate um, for yourself. I know um, a lot of people want to get into it and think that it's uh, kind of far outreach, but it's not. The first thing is financial literacy. Um, just being literate with these finances, man. Just understanding them, understanding what they do, how they how they do it, right? So the basis of it, the foundation is assets and liabilities. All right, that's the foundation. Once you understand this, put everything else together, it will all make sense. Assets is something that you have that put money in your pocket. Liabilities is something that you have to take money out of your pockets. In this case would be a, a duplex. This is the first house I bought. It was a duplex. It put money in my pocket. This is the first car I got. It was a, a Escalade as a liability. It took money out of my pockets. So five months after I got out of prison, I acquired this asset. <clears throat> I took $10,000 and put it on this, right? I bought this house. Um, it wasn't hard. It was just basic knowledge that I'm about to teach you right now so you can do it for yourself. <coughs> so, but before you can uh, do it, you have to understand these things. You have to understand that we're not, we're not getting into real estate to get a nice, big, beautiful house. That's not why we're doing it. We are doing it so we don't have to go to work to pay for that nice, big, beautiful house. That's the concept. We don't want to have to go to work, so we're going to buy as many assets as we can so we don't have to work a day in our life. So what is an asset? An asset is something that put money in your pocket and it increase in value. It appreciates in value. I bought this for $90,000, it's worth $130,000 now. So now, not only did I make money every month, it also became worth more. So I technically am getting paid three times. I got paid once when I bought it and it appreciated in value. I got paid, I got paid um, every month when my tenant paid me. And then if I ever sell it, I'll get paid again for um, however much more is worth. So when you buy these assets, um, you already know the, the motto, buy low, sell high. But with these type of assets, you never sell. We just gonna keep on collecting money like it's our little factory. A liability is something that's taking money out of your pocket. An, ex an expense that you pay, that's a liability. And your car that you bought, your nice, big, beautiful car or your nice, big, beautiful house, those are expenses and those are liabilities. They're not assets. If it's not putting money in your pocket, it's a liability. So ex expenses like mortgages, light bills, all of these things, we want to we want to produce assets. So that we don't have to pay those things. Our assets will pay for them by themselves, right? So anytime you're spending money, make sure you're spending it and it's coming back, right? You, it's going out of your pocket and it's coming back. And the way that you fund all of this stuff is credit. This is this is the key right here. Um, credit, credit cards, loans, mortgages. That's the key. To wealth so wealth is how long you can keep the money coming in being rich is having a lot of money but wealthy is how long can you keep this money all right so a lot of a lot of things go into credit um, some of the factors is your credit score so your credit score range from 300 to 800 right but 
um, banks only going to land if your, your credit score is high. So they're looking at things like how long have you had this credit established? Have you been having credit since you was 18 or did you get it when you was 30? All right. How long have you had credits established? That's one. And then how long did you make timely payments on all of this stuff? Or was you behind 30 days and behind 60 days? Um, how many different accounts did you have? Did you have a um, did you have a, a house on there, a car on there, a personal loan, credit cards? Did you have all of this stuff on there? That's that's the key that a lot of people don't understand about credit is if you got all of those things on there, then you look very good as opposed to just having a credit card. So you want those uh, personal loans. You want those mortgages on your credit report. It looks better. It looks like you can handle money. Right. And then the last thing that they look at is how much do you owe versus how much do you make every month? So that's called your debt to income ratio. When the banks look at your credit file, that's what they're looking for. How much money do you make every month? Can you pay this uh, thing back? All right. So that's the that's the light. We're not going in here and buying them with cash. No. We're going in here and we're buying these assets with credit. So that's one thing that's very important to understand is all of these assets that we buy, we buy them with credit. A lot of people don't like to use uh, credit. They don't like to go into debt. They, you hear people say, I don't like owing people. But the reason why you don't like owing people is because you have to go to work and you have to pay that loan back, right? So if you have something an asset that was paying that loan back, you would love to owe people, right? It, all right, so good debt is something that makes you money, right? I bought a duplex with my debt, so therefore, my duplex makes me money. I pay back the debt that I owe, and then I have some leftovers for myself, right? Bad debt is my car. I cannot make money with my car unless I'm like renting it out or something like that. All right. So that would be bad debt. It is ways you can rent out your car, but it's, it's um, I'm not doing it. So I don't want to speak on it. All right. So these is two way, two different um, ways of looking at it. Good debt and bad, bad debt. All right. So whenever you're talking about all of this, you're using leverage. Whenever you use leverage, that means you can get 10 apples for the price of one, right? So if you get 10 apples for the price of one and you sell all 10 of those apples, now the money that you owe is, is um, you paying it back and now you have free apples. Look at it that way. So the, the uh, benefits to using leverage is that you can scale faster. Remember how I said the apples like you can you can get 10 apples for one and then now you can hurry up and scale it out. Now you look up and you had 100 apples already. So you leverage things like credit cards and you leverage things like loans and mortgages and stuff like that. Now, whenever you leverage in it, now your tenant is paying for the um, loan. You're living for free. So now if you have a job, all of the money that you save is just going into a bank account. And then if you have a product that you produce, like my book, if you have a product like your clothing line or something like that, now that's paying back the loan. All right. So that's how you generate the income and you actually build an equity in these houses and things like that. Equity is just if I owe $50,000 and I pay 25, I have 50% equity, right? So I have 25,000 in equity, right? So there's different types of real estate. Um, the, the main one that people know is a house. That's um, me in front of my, one of my single family houses. Um, it's just a regular house that one family can live in. Then you got multiple multifamily. So that's a two to four unit that um, more than one people can live in. And then you have the big um, sky rises and things like that. That's commercial property. And then you have land. Land is also uh, real estate. 
and you can do a lot of things with land that people just don't think about like put a billboard on there and make money off land like you don't have to be a farmer to make money off land you can make it um you just got to be creative right so different types of real estate is these types and the different things you could do with real estate is one of them is fix and flip all right so the house i bought right there that's uh, one of my fix and flips um what i did was i bought it for twenty five thousand dollars right so i bought it for twenty five thousand and it was appraised at like forty eight thousand dollars right so that was that was thirteen thousand that i had in equity right i had thirteen thousand dollars just for buying this house so what i did was i went into the bank and i pulled the 13 out all right i only had to come with five thousand dollars to obtain this property i didn't have to come with the whole 25 you know you don't have to have all of the money you just have to have a down payment when you're dealing with real estate and that's the great thing about it if you find deals like this i found this deal for twenty five thousand. i put five thousand dollars down walked in the bank with five thousand and walked out with thirteen thousand right that thirteen was in the form of a loan so i do have to pay that back but um that's that's the possibility so i went in there got a loan and went and bought another property right so that's how you scale with leverage right so fix and flips is whenever you buy it put a little money into it and then you flip it right sell it for more than what it was worth so that's what i did with this one it's, it's other ways to find these properties a good one is auctions so auctions is a good way to find homes that have equity like that one i just showed you because um every in every city uh every town somebody got somebody didn't pay their mortgage right somebody is about to get foreclosed on and get kicked out of their property in every city it's just because people die people get divorced people just don't want to deal with uh their house no more so they just let it go and most of these auctions is happening at the courthouse like you go down in the city where I live, um, you go down to the courthouse and every Tuesday they just auctioning off houses. Granted, some of them is not good houses, but then again, some of them are good houses. So you just um, you uh, do your due diligence. You go online, look up the property, see how much is worth on Zillow and the county assessor websites and things like that you go see what it's worth and if it's worth it go ahead and buy it like those is more um more for the advanced investor so you have to have cash but it's opportunities so if you are short on cash creating creative financing is the solution so what creative financing is is basically just like using your head um sometimes you just don't have the money to do a deal i'm i'm i just closed on a deal where i didn't have the money to do it but i got creative with it right so um if you um go into a bank they'll want three to twenty percent down you gotta have good credit and proof of income so sometimes like the bank just is not good for you in my case the deal i'm talking about I went through a private money lender so a private money lender is basically just a person with a lot of money uh just an old person with a million dollars in cash just sitting around um and he want to loan it out and make some money on his money right because of uh, inflation and all of these things like he want to make some money so he loaned me the money and i went and bought some more properties so I didn't have to go to a bank i just went through him and we made it happen so what he wanted was a little bitty down payment and his interest rates is very high so um if i would have went to a bank i'd have got an interest rate around four or five percent he want nine percent that's a, that's a lot so if you just think about it if if i'm paying five percent interest on a thousand dollars that's like what fifty dollars a year but if i'm paying ten percent 
that's like a hundred dollars a year so whenever you get to the hundreds of thousands I got a half a million dollar loan now whenever you get to the hundreds and thousands those numbers add up quick so I'm paying maybe fifty sixty thousand dollars every year in just interest when I could be paying 20 or 30 so that's the thing with the private lenders but the thing with them is it's no hassle and you can close very quick I met I met with him one one month the next month I had the keys to the property in my hand all right so it, it happens quick sometimes with a bank it might take three four months before you can close on the deal so a private money lender is is a good way to go and then just get with your friends and family you know find you somebody who want to partner with you it's a lot of people that want to get into real estate y'all sit down and y'all talk about it or you can get a loan from your family or like I said get these credit cards and run them up and um, use those to buy properties and um, flip them and pay the loan back or it's just so many ways that you can skin this cat that um, the money is not the issue I always tell people finding the deal is what you need to focus on the money is not the issue if you find the deal good enough you know you're gonna find the money trust me so inflation like I said uh, the guy he had a lot of money sitting around and he wanted to deploy it so uh, inflation is a good reason why he wanted to deploy it because um, just look at Dollar Tree they built a whole business model around selling things for a dollar and now everything is a dollar 25 so when the supply goes down the price of everything goes up and that's what happened in the that's what's happening in the economy the supply is going down we're not producing enough right so therefore the price of everything is going up right so if the price of everything is going up you are getting less for your money your money is becoming worth less all right so therefore if you um, deploy it and make money with it now your money is working and that's why it's good to be an investor as opposed to a saver if you save up all your money now you can't buy what you used to buy right if you had a dollar in your sock drawer last month this month you can't even go into the Dollar Tree and get the things you need because everything that went up in price that's inflation and that's happening right now and it's gonna keep happening throughout um, eternity because that's just the way uh, money works so the the whole takeaway from this book is buy assets using credit and have the assets pay for the um, have the assets pay for themselves and now you've paid off the asset and you've generated income right you generated income so now inflation and things like that will not affect you that's the that's a quick breakdown of my book if you want to um, copy just go to www.fromprisontoproperties.com and you will get a free um, purchase order with it or you can order it off Amazon it'll get there in two three days but well, however you want to do it that's up to you it's just I'm presenting you with the information and it's up to you if you're gonna drink the water I did it five months after prison and if I did it I know you can do it